G'day mate, welcome back to Factorio with me, GD. So, we're standing here beside our power because I want to do a couple of things. So, actually, let's cover what we've done between episodes. Between episodes, I went and built this wall. I was going to build this wall, but I decided, look, let's leave that. Let's do that combat together. At the same time, I want to reserve that because we're at the point where we start need to start looking at trains. Like, we have some more iron ore all the way out here. We have some copper... We have, that could be a problem, maybe? Definitely. We're gonna take some damage. Our lasers are getting upgraded. They're, they're pretty beefy, but they're not beefy enough. So, okay, first things, all right. Tech trick, no, nope. let's, 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 let's try and explain what we're gonna do this episode. So, first things first, uh, put in this wall, put in this wall, okay? Got a lot, lot more walls up and running. Next thing I wanna do is we're gonna do some research. I want to get some very important tech done. Uh, and then at the same time, we're going to go do some combat. I'm going to clear out these two problems. Then I'll probably build the wall off camera. And then see what else we can fit in the episode. So with all that said, let's run the intro. So with that out of the way, first thing I want to do, tech tree, tech tree, tech tree. We want to grab the logistic system. Now, the logistic system probably needs a whole separate video on it. Hopefully by now I've got the video out. I've been trying for a couple of days. We'll see what happens. So logistic system really lets us upgrade our poor man's requested chest to real requester chests. Okay. We can really tell the bots to start moving stuff from A to B. Okay. It means they're going to start getting concrete up and running a whole bunch of other things. It also means, um, as I said, these poor man requested chests can go away and replace them with real ones, which means we no longer have the chance of stuff ending up in storage. It's all going to go to where I want it to go. On top of that, uh, the other thing I really want to do, and it's mainly because this is not running, is I want to put in a splitter here. Uh, and I want to have you input priority from the right, and I want to have you output priority to the left. So I want fuel to go this way into this. Um, click that. I want fuel, uh, uh, fuel to go in here first. If it can't go in here, I want to go in here. Because I'd really like to get rid of the little bit of coal we have here, the little bit of copper, the little bit of iron, uh, the tiniest, idiest bit, 2.4k stone that we've got left. Um, I, I'd really like it all gone. In fact, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to put a miner there and a miner there. No. Nope. We're going to double up our miners. Gonna miners there. And... You, out of my way. Uh, miner there and a miner there. So I'm now going to have four miners doing the same three tiles of uh, three tiles of stone. Okay, uh, just trying to maximize it to try and get rid of the tiniest bit of stone that we have left. Uh, I want it gone. I want it gone. So you can do 1.7, you can do 1.7, you can do 2.4, 2.4. Basically, we've spread the same three tiles of stone over four miners now. So just a little bit quicker way of getting rid of it. Um, so yeah, I want to get rid of those. I want to get the request chests up and running. Uh, we need to go look at some combat. So combat-wise, let's start with combat. Uh, I would really like some explosive rockets. So down here, after I walk around everything... We're making rockets, if I remember to refill you manually with green circuits. Uh, once we have rockets, we can then make explosive rockets. Uh, you were not capped. Do we want to cap you? Yeah, we're going to... Oh. No, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a splitter, then a belt, then we'll put in one box. So 50% will go out to there, which we will cap. The other 50% will come through to here, which we will turn into explosive rockets. Explosive rockets require rockets and more explosives, funnily enough. Uh, so let's go one, two, one, two, uh, power, 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 character in the way. Uh, long hand inserter there, 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 and there. Uh, actually, we'll have it come this way because we can. And then put down another passive provider box like so. 
Okay, so that'll get us some explosive rockets. Explosive rockets would help if I had the inserters around the right way. That's perfectly fine. They're doing better now, so we can have some explosive rockets. Next thing I want to do, and that means you just ran out of iron. Have some iron. Uh, I am still in the network, so I have some green circuits on the way. Uh, next thing, overall research. So overall research. Um, with logistics system, we can start playing with that. Also means I really want to tick off the our last just blue site. So efficiency modules. Train breaking force is pretty pointless until I have trains. So we're going to grab the mining productivity first, but then I'm going to grab the two train breaking forces. So I'm just, I'm out of just red, green, blue science. Okay. I have red, green, blue, blue and military science. And which means we probably should tick those off. Yeah. And then we're down to red, green, blue, purple and above. Okay. So that should fix that problem. Robots. Bring me, oh, you brought me my green circuits. Cool. Have another box full. Bring me my iron. Faster. Uh, we still have plenty of cliff explosives. Yes. Which is out of steel. Throw some more steel at the machine. Uh, come on, robots. Okay. Uh, big defensive wall is holding. Uh, these walls are holding. This wall's holding. They are taking a significant amount of damage when we get attacks coming in. You guys have just given up. You've just lost. You, you couldn't work out which way to go to attack things. Okay. Uh, throw that iron in there. Okay. Uh, the main reason I wanted to start burning the other type of fuel is... So it should mean we're going to stop making as much solid fuel, but it should give us a little bit more light oil that we can hopefully crack into petroleum. Uh, speaking of petroleum and other things, one thing that I haven't done, which we should, probably should do, because we have an absolute lack of crude oil, is use productivity modules. It's going to slow down all these machines. I don't mind. I have plenty of machines. So if we can save some resources and get some free resources out of these machines, we're going to. Uh, can I please have more productivity modules? Thank you. Uh, in fact, actually, we're going to use an upgrade planner because all these are pre-built to have level one efficiency modules in them. And if I swipe them like that, the upgrade planner will convert them from one type of module to the other type of module. And then the robots take, take care of the problem for us. Where are they? They're on their way still. Okay. Because I'd really like to do sulfuric acid and sulfur. We can do it for to do sulfur as well because there's plenty of sulfur uh, on the belt. Uh, come on, robots. Here we go. We've got a flying army coming over. They're going to put productivity modules in everything. I need to manually put them in that machine and manually put them in these machines those are done oh, psh, nope turns out we can't nope we can't put productivity modules in flamer ammo but we can put them in there okay uh they're all done maybe you're not okay productivity uh fluids 10 minutes uh one minute no we want petroleum Technically, it's slowed down. We might have made the whole system too slow to keep up. Uh, let's go with plastic. Uh, 10 minute mark. Eh? Eh? It's going up. It's definitely going up. Uh, fluids. Uh, no. So we took a massive dive as the module started going in. But I would say 9k, 10k compared to 6.4. I'd say that's definitely an improvement. Uh, uh, light oil, same story. Heavy oil, same story. It's not going to change our crude oil. So we're just getting more, we're getting more resources out for the same amount, uh, same amount of resources in. 
The catch is we probably just used a whole lot more power. 10 minute mark for not that. Uh, consumption. Yeah, I'd say the power went up slightly. Uh, that's a problem. We do have a lot of problems over here that we need to deal with. Uh, future problems for future G JD. So, plastic belts looking a little bit better. All the belts looking a little bit, a little bit better when it comes to the oil products. Uh, next thing I want to do is... Uh, We've finished that research, so we can come to here. Actually, let's just get the workshop and we'll just paste it in place. And remember to go cap the things that I keep uncapping. Uh, cap that. So that should have unlocked. No, it was the wrong damn blueprint. Uh, production sites. Hormones request chests. Utility science. Put that blueprint there. Okay, now cap that chest again. So that should have started making requester chests and also buffer chests. Now, a requester chest will go to trains. Trains! Request a chest, okay? Request a chest, plain and simple. It allows us to request things out of the network. So as you can see, this is requesting, trying to request in 50 engine units. Obviously, engine units are not put in the network. As we can see, we've also got pipes being requested down here to make steam turbines for nuclear parts. Uh, we also have concrete being requested down here. We've got pipes being requested down here to make fluid wagons, which we're gonna be using in the not too distant future. That is set awfully high. That needs to be trimmed back just slightly. So, engine units, for some reason, yeah, I chose not to put them into the network. That seems like a bit of hindsight. Uh, you. Put one of those right there. And then we'll have engines in the network, which means we can start making... There were three things that need engines. Uh, trains need engines artillery wagons need engines which is still a few ticks away and whatever that building is which I cannot remember no that just needs concrete that's artillery wagon no that's artillery that's artillery wagons I feel like there's another request to chest I can't, can't remember where it is okay on top of that we have a buffer chest now a buffer chest is A buffer chest is a cross between a passive provider and a request chest. That's probably the best way of putting it. Uh, and we're actually going to grab some of those. And actually go back to this one. Because this has an upgrade planner in it for poor man's request chest up to a buffer chest. Uh, and that is all of them. So, what a buffer chest does, if I physically put them down, uh, then they need to be... Okay, we need to get them all down first. Then I need to put the other blueprint back on top to actually set them correctly. So, we go back to that blueprint. We put that back on there. We cap you for the 43rd time. You know what? Mm, no, they'll uncap anyway. Okay, so what a buffer chest does is it actually asks for things to come back in the network into this particular box at the same time also lets the bots bots access this particular chest. So if I put down a... I have one on me. If I put down a request chest and... We'll use something absolutely useless like burner miner drills. You. I put burner miner drills all there. I put all the burner miner drills in there, okay? If we now look in the panel on the right, or we press L to bring up the logistics network, and I type in burn... Nope, there's no burner anythings in the network, okay? So, if I come here and I request... Uh, burner mining drills. 50 of them, please. 
we can see that's red. There are none in the network at all. They don't exist, even though we can see they're right here. They're inside this blue chest. This blue chest obviously has logistics on the right hand side. It is connected to the network, but the bots are not allowed to get stuff out of this particular chest. Okay, if we change this over to a red chest, do I have a red chest on me? Of course I don't. Actually, we'll just pick up that one and then I'll go to the new one down. So if I put this in its place, okay, and bring this back up, we can now see that I have 40 on their way, okay? The bots are gonna come pick them up from here and they're gonna give them to me, all right? Make it back a blue one and suddenly they don't exist anymore, okay? Bots get really confused. Um, in fact, there's probably a whole avalanche of bots. Okay, you need some lasers too. Okay, that make you happy? Sheesh. What we can do is we can have a buffer chest. I could put a buffer chest there. We bring this back up. Obviously, the bot's going to deliver them to me. At the same time, I can set a logistic request for 300 of them, let's say. And then if I didn't want these anymore, so I took them off my logistics request and I trashed them, the bots are going to pick them up and they're going to put them back in there because this is the chest that is asking for them and it's asking for 300. So it's going to bring in 300. Anything more than 300 goes off to trash. So if I set this to 10 and then we bring this back up, we request them. So the bots will bring me all of these. Come on, you can do it bots. Come pick up the last one. One in the box. There we go. Okay, and then I cancel that and I trash these a second time. We're going to see that there's going to be 10. It might be a little bit over because the robots are carrying three items each now. So it has to be a multiple of three. So it end up being 12 items, 12 items total. And then the rest of them got dumped into just general storage. Okay, so that's how a buffer chest works. Um, like I said, there is going to be a whole separate video on it. If it's already published, you'll find a link up the top right hand corner. If it's not already published, I apologize. So. I have swapped over all these over to buffer chests. So the idea is this is going to have up to 2,000 transport built in there. Anything more than 2,000 will get dumped into storage. But it also means once it's in storage, it can get pulled back to this chest. Okay, that's the important distinction. So with that done, we want to start upgrading a few things around the base. So I want to have requested chests. Uh, actually, I'd like some more requested chests. So we're going to add another row. I'm going to say, you know what, I'd like some red chests on me, I'd like some blue chests on me, I'd like 50 of them on me, I'd like 50 of them on me. You might notice in here there's one other type of chest, which is active provider chest. Active provider chest is really, really simple. Anything goes in the chest, bots pick it up and they take it anywhere else anywhere else okay they'll normally take it to storage because that's where it goes first but they'll basically make sure that chest is empty at all times that's their one job in life uh that's why the purple ones are so dangerous if you see a base full of purple ones it means the bots are very confused and have many many things they're being asked to take out of those chests and take and put somewhere else so we're gonna have two chests here rather than having one doing wood and one doing coal i can now have one doing wood and coal and now it means all the coal and all the wood in the base are going to end up here oh that's another thing um buffer chests no requested chests don't automatically take from a buffer chest okay if you want them to take from a buffer chest which in this case we don't we don't care you can you have to tick this box okay so the idea is your buffer chest your buffer chests are really for your personal use and as we can see that definitely worked with both coal and stone going all the same chest brilliant um so yeah the idea of a buffer chest is it's 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 a buffer there for you uh we want you to do uh no actually we want you to be a do i want a buffer chest no i want you to be a requester chest same as the other ones i want you to do iron ore uh what's our other poor man's request you're going to be doing stone uh, there's one around here for copper, uh, copper, I don't have uranium, so I don't have to worry about that, uh, okay, so that's done, that's, oh, 
no, there's other things like this. I was coming over here and manually putting grenades in here. You know what? Uh, bots, you're now in charge of putting grenades in this box. And you know what? I don't need 100. I'm going to settle for 20. Uh, this is out of iron ore, uh, iron plate again. Again, we're going to come in here. We're going to say, hey, you, bots, can you please put 50 iron plate in this chest? Uh, green circuits, same story. We can click that, click that, click that. We're going to say 100. Uh, put those back in there. Uh, and now the bots are just going to come over here. They're going to pick up things and they're going to put them in the chests for us, which means we no longer have to do it. Same story with this one. This requires steel, uh, which I never set up. Now, another quick, quick thing I can show you is if we use, if you remember we had before, we could copy and paste from assembler to assembler. So if I hold down shift and I right click on this one to say that's the one I want to copy from and keep holding down shift or press shift again and left click on this one that'll copy a recipe across i can also copy a rec recipe to a request chest so again i've shift right clicked on this one if i shift left click on this one it's going to request up to one minute's worth of production into this chest so in theory if this machine was going flat out in one minute it would use 22 steel so it's going to make sure there's 22 steel in here at all times we should keep this making barrels we should keep this guy making cliff explosives which should keep this chest nice and full so i can go and blow things up when they get in my way uh, as you can see iron's down running which is going to make sure our rocket production stays constant you have some rockets you have some explosive rockets uh where else were we manually moving things around the base I think that was probably the only one. We've been really good this time around about manually moving things. Um, okay. Uh, continuing on my list. So now we've got some defenses up. Those guns don't have to be there. So we can deconstruct all those guns. Turns out I could deconstruct the other ones if a RoboPort reached, which we know from experience, I could just ghost in the right spot and the robots take care of it. Uh, it also means this whole belt thing here can go because I move the defenses forward, uh, which again is going to require a RoboPort. There. Is that going? Yeah, that'll give us enough range. Uh, what are you looking for? That, or you'll never find it. Um, what else did I want? Uh, I'd like to rip up these defenses, but that's not going to happen. I'd like to rip up those defenses, but that's not going to happen either. Um, I'm just looking at the episode time, and we've basically used up all our time talking about request a chest and all that sort of stuff. Concrete, concrete. That's the other thing I want to get done this episode. Uh, because I'd really like some concrete paths. Um, on top of that, we do have some stuff in the workshop that requires concrete. So we might as well get concrete started. So concrete is going to require a couple of things. Uh, first off, it requires a water input, which means you need to build it somewhere near water. Um, turns out we're going to build it right up here. That can all go. Uh, also good to know is when walls are marked for deconstruction, you can walk through them. So if you're ever out fighting on the front lines with no robots anywhere near you, uh, you can deconstruct the walls and you can walk through them. But biters for some reason are stupid enough, stupid enough not to be able to see all the gaps in the walls and they still have to go around the walls. So, you know, pro tip for next time you're in combat. Uh, that one, that one, that one. Okay. Uh, oh, also means all the ammo that I accidentally put on the ground when using the, the Z key rapidly uh, also is going to get picked up. So, we need to have an offshore pump. Offshore pump. All right here, we're going to do like three assemblers. Three assemblers seems like a good number. Uh, you, sir, are going to do concrete which is going to require some straight pipe. 
it's also going to require some brick and some iron ore. Uh, luckily enough, I happen to have iron ore right here. Uh, just a slow inserter. It doesn't have to be special. Uh, and then brick. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, brick, we want to split here. Oops. Uh, out this way. Get rid of that power pole. Bring it to... Okay. In, no, in, in. Uh. <sighs> Alright, let's get the ins done first. Uh, we want to go from that belt to that belt. Yes. Okay, that one to there. Okay, uh, output. Output, I have a pipe in the way. Pipe makes things a little bit more interesting. Um, actually, if we put that there, and we put that there, and I have out, out, and, and out, and we're just gonna run the belt one tile. Done. And somewhere in my copy and paste history, I have an inserter in a box. That'll start making this concrete. Not a vast summer concrete, but at least enough. Um, I'm not going to cap a concrete box because, honestly, it stacks to 4.8k, and then you're going to end up concreting something and needing 4.8k in a hurry. So, that gives us concrete. That gives us... Uh, which is immediately going to get picked up and taken down to the workshop because there's things waiting in the workshop for concrete and has been for quite some time. Um... What else do I want to get done? That's probably about it for this episode. Um, I'd, I'd love to get more stuff done. Um, I'd love for these attack waves to go away. Um, yeah, our lasers do not pack enough of a punch. Not even close. So we are taking damage every single time, which is being repaired. But yeah, I'd love to pack a bit more of a punch if we could. Uh, you guys are out of power. Oh, that whole wall is out of power. Uh, that's bad. Does that explain why, yeah, there was no radar coverage? Well, nothing's complaining that it needs repairing, so that's a plus. Nobody noticed. Uh, at least none of the natives did, so that'll mine out that. That'll mine out that. We are slowly getting rid of the miners here. Same story here. This cop is actually not being used fast enough. Um, yeah, next episode, combat. We're going to go deal with these guys. We now have uh, explosive rockets. Uh, same time, I should probably show you guys how poison capsules and slowdown capsules work, along with the defender capsules, which we haven't automated. And honestly, I'll probably just handcraft a little bit so we can demonstrate. Uh, because the, we've got volunteers. We've got volunteers everywhere who would be very happy to help us demonstrate on them. Oh, walls. Walls, walls, ammo. Uh, that's another thing I can now do. I can now... Because we now have requested chests, we can actually request items to a specific spot. We can go out to our little wall box, which I have right here. Put that in there and request in ammo like so. Which means I can remove the next uh, the, all the ammo, and I'm going to have 200 ammo scheduled to come to that box. It also means because we're lazy, we can get rid of that, paste that there instead. Uh, get rid of that one, paste that there instead. Get rid of 300 ammo. Yeah, it's just going to end up being brought back to storage and then probably flown straight back out to fill up the replacement chest. Uh, 
have a feeling some idiot's going to fly over this spider nest. Which I don't think was there earlier. I think that's definitely expanded. Ooh. Yeah, it's not good when things die. Things that die are expensive. Um, yeah, I have a feeling some idiot's going to fly over this spider nest over and over and over. And we're, we're going to have to clear it sooner than I like. Anyway, like I said, with all that said, that's where I'm going to leave today's episode. We've got way more walls up and running. We have a lot more toys to play with in the next episode. Oh, we were going to do tanks. Did we get tanks done? Oh, we have tanks done. Next episode, we're going to be playing with some, some cars, some tanks, some distractor capsules, some slowdown capsules. Oh, definitely in some cluster grenades because they are so much fun to play with. Um, and we're going to go probably teach Mother Na Nature and some biters some lessons. Anyway, like I said, with all that said, I'm out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you're enjoying. This is episode number whatever, 15, 16 of our definitive guide to, to, to Factorio. If you have any questions, you have any thoughts, um, anything that you think I should have covered that I haven't already, uh, by all means, comment section below or even better, jump on my Discord. Link's up the top right hand corner right about now. Um, pester me in Discord. Tell me the things that I'm definitely missing. Because I'm pretty sure we're doing decent coverage and we've covered not quite everything, but we're getting we're getting pretty good coverage on all the different parts of Factorio and Factorio base building. Anyway, like I said, with that, I'm out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you're enjoying. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Alright, bye.